Let's look at the Cauchy problem for the Laplace equation. So we'll work in uh, two dimensions here, and two spatial dimensions, that is. And suppose we take the condition uh, on u along the line, uh, well, along the x-axis, to be given by f, and uh, for du dy uh, along there to be given by g. So there's some interesting features of this elliptic PDE um, that are best seen by looking at an example. So suppose we take a couple of examples. For the first one, um, we'll take f of x uh, to be 0 and g of x to be 0. OK, so then you can check quite quickly that the solution is just the 0 function, the trivial one. u identically equal to 0. OK. Uh, on the other hand, let's consider um, f of x to be uh, 1 over n cosine nx. And we'll still take g to be 0. OK, so in this case, um, the solution uh, is totally different. And so in particular, uh, so explicitly, uxy is given by 1 over n cosine nx cosh and y. And this um, <coughs> cosh part right here is going to be unbounded uh, as y gets large, because it looks like an exponential function. Let's take a look. Here are the solutions for um, n equals 1, n equals 2, and n equals 3. And on the one hand, you can see that the uh, the, the boundary value right here, so this is 1 over n cosine nx, um, the amplitude is getting closer and closer to 0. In fact, at this scale, it looks like it's identically equal to 0 pretty quickly here. On the other hand, the boundary at infinity for large y is getting more oscillatory, and it's growing even faster. So I don't know if you can see the scale on the axes here, but here this one is 20. This one is... 500, and this one is 10,000. So it's really blowing up rapidly. So on the one hand, we can make the initial condition as close as we want to being equal to 0, right? Because for large n, uh, this, this function here, it's going to uniformly go to 0. That is, every single value of f of x on the line is going to be less than or equal to 1 over n. So that whole oscillating function is just going to collapse down to 0. And at the same time, the closer that gets to 0, the more berserk the function values get out here at infinity. So this is a highly undesirable thing. You'd want to say, well, if these um, initial conditions here, uh, let me grab a different color. So if, if this, in, this initial condition and this initial condition are really close to each other, then you would expect the solutions to be close to each other as well. But this here is nothing like the zero function. It's just something totally crazy. So what we're seeing right here is um, the failure of this problem to be stable. So let me write some of this down. So for large values of n, so this expression just means for n much greater than 1 or for very large values of n, the conditions um, <coughs> in the second problem are only slightly different. from the conditions in 1. Uh, but the solution is 
radically different. And I say radically because it's uh, qualitatively different. Uh, it's, for example, completely unbounded. Um, <coughs> and, and so more formally, we might say that the solution u um, does not depend oops, continuously uh, on the input data meaning the initial condition phi. So by change continuously I mean roughly speaking that a small change in um, <coughs> The initial condition, or sorry, I guess uh, this is a boundary condition, this results in a qualitatively um, different solution. I'll make that a little bit more precise um, in a following video.